All right, before I get started today, I wanted to do a shout out or just uh, let you guys know about a channel that you definitely need to check out. So there's Pete's Comics and Reviews. The guy's hilarious. You guys, uh, if you're not subbed to him, definitely check him out. He only has uh, five videos at this time and um, I think he only has 25 subscribers. He's been around in the YouTube community for a while, but uh, he just recently started making videos and uh, definitely check them out, but let's get on with it. Um, so this week we have a whole bunch of comics uh, and it looked like it was a lot of doubles for me this week. Uh, so the first one is Batman 44 and this is the A cover and the B cover. And I'm a sucker for wedding issues or I guess leading up to the wedding. So I ended up getting uh, two of these. Um, next, I think uh, this is uh, Batman White Knight number seven uh, out of eight. Um, this one's really nice because uh, I was kind of getting tired of not seeing Joker anymore. And this is the issue where he comes back. Uh, still really good. Definitely read it. And I ended up getting the B covers with Renee Montoya on it. Um, now, a new series that came out uh, that I, I tried out was The Curse of Brimstone. Um, this is done by Justin Jordan and Philip Tan. Um, I actually like this quite a bit. I think the art is very suitable for what uh, the story is about. It, it has more of a darker, grittier feel to it. it makes it feel a little bit more small town and from uh, the character is from a mining town. So um, I'm gonna stick with this. Uh, I think this is a pretty good opening issue for uh, Curse of Brimstone. So I'll, I'll, I'll check out the next two after this, but uh, if you didn't pick it up, definitely pick it up. Now, um, one of my spec, spec books, if you want to say, um, I really thought that this was going to take off, but to be honest, I, I, I didn't really like the story too much in, in this uh, Deathstroke and Batman. Uh, it started off pretty slow, but this is the storyline that we're, we're going to find out if Bruce is really the father of Damien or if Deathstroke is. And this is just a setup issue. Um, this has uh, Batman and Deathstroke somewhat facing off, but um, we don't get any kind of resolution. And it looks like we may have a team up in the next issue. So like I said, this was a spec book for me. So I went pretty heavy on it. Um, and there's one disappointment with it. So I got a couple copies of it. Um, we'll see. I, about them but I got a couple copies of the A cover and then we have the awesome Matina cover but my Matinas came I, I guess you could say slightly damaged or printer air um, where the variant sign is let me see yeah the variant sign there's a little bit of um, it looks like the ink it looks like it has ink rub and I was hoping it was only going to be on one of them, but it ended up being on all of them. And like I said, I pre-ordered these and everyone in the store had these ink rubs, but I ended up still picking them up because I'm not going to um, force my comic book retailer to take them back um, because I, you know, there's a printer error. Uh, still a beautiful cover, uh, but I, definitely that is a, a problem with it. Oh, and I had one more. So like I said, I went really heavy on that. Continue on, continuing on with the Frank Cho covers, I ended up picking up the Harley and this is gonna be a connecting cover uh, with issue number 42 that comes out. And I, can, I know that he's continuing his work um, for the end of this run and I even think that um, for the next team that's going to be taking over Harley uh, That he's still going to be doing the variant covers. Uh, I guess I'll have to find out in the next solicit for sure Now some image titles um, another Matina cover I ended up picking up was uh, Spawn 284 and that's the color the black and white and the Virgin and I ordered these in advance 
so I was really happy to get get those ones. All right, Walking Dead 178. Pretty good issue. We actually get a little bit of action from Princess in this one. But the thing that I really love, and I miss this character a lot, is we got the we get the Andrea cover for the 15 year anniversary, and of course the Bill Sienkiewicz. And uh, this will always be one of my favorite characters. Um, and if you're not caught up, then definitely do, but you'll find out what happens with Andrea. All right, um, all, all new Wolverine number 33. We're getting to the end of this. And this is of course the premiere issue with uh, Laura being old woman Laura and this is a future timeline and it, it's kind of good because we get to see Honey Badger a little bit older and just uh everything that that's happening a little bit of a surprise in this issue uh but I don't want to ruin it so definitely check it out if you're interested in it but uh we get old old woman Laura in this <clears throat> and of course uh, the big book for this week that everyone got, but I ended up pre-ordering all, all these, which is the Amazing Spider-Man 798 and the Alex Ross cover. And, um, you know, everyone always talks about cover art, but this storyline and the artwork would not be as good. Um, they changed up the artist right before they premiered the Red Goblin, which I think they should have. But um, Stuart Amenis is an artist that is probably one that's been around with Marvel for a very long time and does fantastic, <clears throat> fantastic artwork that I don't think is getting enough credit. And um, for a story to really be impactful, um, art plays a huge factor in it. And uh, obviously, when you see that uh, splash page of the Red Goblin, it it's very it, it's very vibrant it, it's dark and it has a really good feel to it compared to the last art, artist on this arc i forget who it was but um i'm really happy that they went with Stuart Amenis. um i also ended up getting the ramos cover and then um i i was surprised but uh i got two of the young guns also I didn't get the one in 100. Um, maybe I will because I'm a huge Amazing Spider-Man fan. But uh, at this time, I haven't got it. Um, one other thing that I wanted to say about this, about the writing in here. I haven't been a Dan Slott fan for a very long time. And I dropped this title. And I and I was up to date on Amazing Spider-Man from um, when they originally relaunched it in the early 2000s. All the way up to probably like the 600s and I dropped it because of Dan Slott's writing. Um, I don't like how he really writes Green Goblin. I, I feel that he writes him uh, too comical. Um, one of the best Green Goblins that I, I saw I seen written besides you know the uh, the original take on him is uh, Warren Ellis in the Thunderbolt series where uh, we had uh, Norman Osborn leading the Thunderbolts. And he wasn't even opposing character because he was in his mask the whole time. And you get that built, that tension that was building and building and building. Like, when is Norman going to lose it? And when are you going to see the psychopath come out and, and, and start terrorizing people? And when that payoff happened, it made that storyline really pop if you if you've never actually read that thunderbolt series by warren ellis um i can't remember the numbers right offhand i think it may be like 110 through 118 um probably one of the best runs i i, I read out of thunderbolts and i was really sad to see warren ellis leave at that time um but uh that is green goblin in my mind uh one of the better ones uh i'm talking about recent things in the last like probably like five to seven years but um, I don't like uh, Dan Slott's take on him. And I'm going to be kind of happy to see him go. 
Uh, another thing that I picked up was, of course, the, uh, the True Believers, Thanos. I don't, and this is going to be my first appear, appearance of Thanos. Maybe one day I'll eventually get uh, Iron Man 55, but I um, ended up picking that up for a dollar. And definitely, if you guys aren't reading uh, Fantastic Four, uh, num this this is an, a great addition to uh, the Marvel 2-in-1. Now, a title that I, I think I finally got all these issues so I could start reading it is Avengers uh, No Surrender number uh, 687. And I also got the variant cover for that. And then, I, I'm not sure if this is the going to be the last arc before they relaunch this with Donnie Cates, but um, ended up getting Venom. And then uh, I ended up getting the Venomized also. Whoop. So, there's that. Oh, and I... Got the variant for that. But that's it for this week. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Until next time, see ya.